It's your boy, I'm Reezy, and I'm back with another Road to So Rare boss episode in this series where we follow my journey on So Rare. I had a crazy day yesterday regarding football news, regarding my So Rare cards. I mean, I usually reveal the new cards that I've bought since my last video a bit later on, but one of them is Enzo Fernandez, one of my favorite Chelsea players. I love Enzo Fernandez. I love watching him play. He's been under a bit of criticism recently, and I think people have lost a bit of faith in him, hence his price dropping, but... His price dropped meant I could now realistically afford him at my kind of beginner budget. I've got one of my favorite Chelsea players, so it was very exciting. But literally about 15 or 20 minutes after I'd bought him, still on that joy, feeling that joy of, you know, owning a Sora Rare card that you love, the player, it's from your team, you know, you're going to root for him. He's young. I've got his career ahead of him. I've, you know, I was, I was having all of those emotions about a new Soro manager having one of his favorite players, maybe my favorite Chelsea player, you know, finally got his card literally 15 or 20 minutes later. Ridiculous news for Santos, hence me wearing my Santos shirt today. Tragic news for my Soro plans for Santos. I think if, if I had a bigger budget now, we'd have some strings coming in. We'd have some sad music. We'd have some black and white. It'd start raining, but you know, the channel's not there yet, people. You know, like and subscribe. Come on, guys. If you like and subscribe, if you enjoy my videos, give them a like, give them a subscribe to the channel, and we can put those production values in place. So for now, you're just going to have to imagine the somber tone. But Harold Preciado, Santos' best player, Santos' key striker, my most expensive card that I've bought from Liga Amex since my recent move to buy Mexican cards he's now facing a ban from the sport. He failed a drugs test in January, which has now come out as a guilty test. And so he's now banned from football indefinitely. We don't know how it's going to go. We don't know how long the ban's going to be. He's got five days, I think, now to appeal. But Preciado, banned from football. My so rare Preciado card. I think the first card I bought, when I, when I decided to buy Mexican cards, I was like, right, I want Santos cards because they're my Mexican team. I bought Preciado and uh, Acevedo. So the Santos goalkeeper and the Santos striker. He wasn't cheap and he's been a disaster. Since I owned him, he's, he played like one game, got injured for about three or four weeks. Came back last week from injury, so I didn't play him because he was a 50-50. Scored, but I didn't have him, so I couldn't get those points. And now he's got a ban from football. And I'm a beginner. I'm new on Soros, but he was one of the most expensive cards I had. So that is really annoying because I'd got him and the goalkeeper, and then I tried to get a few budget um, Liga MX cards that were still good and young and up and coming. And I was trying to be clever, but this is a big blow for me. Um yeah so let's look at how i did last week uh that's how we usually go let's take a look at how i did last week i'm gonna try and pick myself up try and remain calm we're gonna do it we're gonna soldier on let's have a look at how i did last weekend in game week four five five okay composure restored Preciado pain put aside. We're going to move on. Santos are going to struggle, by the way, this season now. The rest of the season, Santos don't have a striker. Preciado was the main striker and the only really good one. I've got another one, Santiago Munoz, who's not great. 20, 21 years old. Not, he's not nowhere near that level yet. And they've got a few other players who could possibly play as a false nine. But Santos are going to really struggle now. Maybe I can pick up the players that are going to play in his absence. I've already got one, Santiago Munoz. I just don't have a lot of confidence in them. So it's a blow, but let's take a look at how I did last weekend. It wasn't a good week for my cap leagues. Uh, my cap 220, my cap 240, and my cap 270 all did bad. All didn't do great. 220 only got that. Cap 240... 240 was a punt because the goalkeeper wasn't playing. And I knew best there is a bit of an injury doubt. And as a result, he didn't play. So that wasn't great. Robertson, once again, another good score from Robertson. He's been a great card. Um, no one in the, apart from Raya, but none of the players in the 220 really did well. They, it was a punt lineup as well. The only capped league that I was taking kind of seriously was the cap 270. And once again, let down by Uni and SG. Lapusine, I should just say now officially, it's his last, that was his last week. He's on the transfer list now. And there's no way he's coming back in my squad. He's just been so frustrating since I bought him. I bought him ages ago. One of the first cards I bought. 
And Uni and SG, big team, always scoring well, always doing well, or usually top of the league. And Lapusin was did gave me some great scores when I first got him. And then just completely fallen off the cliff. Just either doesn't play. When he does play, he's a bit average. His scores, his good scores are far too few. So this was Lapusin's last week for me. I am a little bit impulsive. But, you know, there's only so much my patience can go. No one would surely still have patience with these Union SG wingers. Someone in the YouTube comments, I think last week or the week before, said they're having a similar problem with Brighton and they just ended up having to sell the players because they weren't worth the will they play, won't they play dilemma. That's how I'm now with Union SG. I've got Castro Montes and Lapusin. Both play on the wings. Both seem to get dropped randomly. Lapusin seems to be getting dropped more than Castro Montes. So he's the one, the first one to go. So he's on the transfer list. If anybody wants, I've not really sold him, but if anybody wants him, have him. Um, Soleil continues his amazing form. Soleil, since he's coming back from injury, just delivering really good scores. Captained him, gave me 100. Delighted. Uh, Bilal, not great. And then these two, not great. So the 270 wasn't just Lapusin not playing. Everyone except for Soleil didn't turn up. So cap leagues all down the toilet that week. Champion America. Um, the Santos boys did well. Another win for Santos. Two wins in a row because Preciado came back and scored. However, now gone. So let's see how Santos do. The good thing about Santos now is hopefully they've got a bit of momentum. Santos are playing a lot more solid. The new manager's got them playing really solid, really ugly to watch. If you're a neutral, you don't want to be watching Santos games. However, as a Santos fan, it's, it's good to see them grinding wins finally. So... Acevedo did well for me. It was a bad week for Nathan Silva. Villa Pando didn't do anything. However, these two boys, promising for the future. Aguirre, I've been saying on the channel for a while now, Atlas striker on loan from Santos. By the way, Santos need him back because their backup striker, the best Santos striker, isn't playing for Santos. He's at loan in Atlas, in my opinion. In my opinion, the best Santos striker now now that Preciado's banned, <laughs> now that Preciado's banned, Aguirre is the best Santos striker. He's on loan at Atlas. And Atlas have so many creative midfielders. He's now finishing the chances that they've been creating for the other guys while he was away. So he scored again, captain, lovely stuff. And then Brian, who I signed last week, the most Mexican name ever, Brian. He, um, he did well. 91 score from Brian. So loving Nakaxa, by the way. Really getting into Nakaxa. I've got Brian. I've got um, Alan Montes. And I think I might have one other player somewhere. So Nakaxa. Got a few good cards from them. Premier League specialist did well, but we don't usually take the Premier League specialist too seriously. Um, I say did well. It did better than the Cap Leagues. Um, Sterling, Longstaff, and Munoz, not great. But with Munoz, it's 50-50. He's got Luton at the weekend, so he, I'm expecting another good performance next week. It wasn't a good fixture the, 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 the week. I think it was Spurs. So with him, it really is a when he has a good fixture, he's great to target. When he has a bad fixture, don't play him. Under-23, it was my first time entering the under-23 limited squad. As I said last week, my under-23 squad is still... I'm still working out what pieces I need for it. I've got the goalkeeper. I've got a defender, Udogi, who... Uh, I didn't think would play, and he did end up playing. I put him in my academy team. He did end up playing for Spurs, but a 35 wasn't great. He's still getting back to fitness. So I've got a goalkeeper who did well this weekend. Clean sheet from him. I've got Udogi, and then I've kind of got a lot of midfielders and strikers who I'm piecing together. I have signed a few. I'll show you those in a minute. I have signed a few strikers for that under-23 spot. And I've also just got a lot of Mexican under-23 strikers and midfielders who i'm trying to work out who the best ones are so i've also signed enzo fernandez who could be my midfielder for the under 23s now and i've signed a few strikers i'll show you them who but for this week it wasn't great because i put in marquez at atlanta he had a tricky fixture kate cowell i did expect more from the, the new youngster at uh, chivas i did expect a bit more from him but 34 he's still young he's gonna have weeks where he does that and Fulgencio at Atlas. I told you, Atlas, a lot of creative players. He's having a little bit of a dip at the moment. But, you know, he's young, hoping he picks back up. And then an academy team. So that's how I did at last weekend. There wasn't really much to report from midweek. Let's take a quick look now at the cards that I bought. The most recent one being Enzo Fernandez. Delighted to get him. I got him at about 16, 17 pounds. 
He's, when I first joined Solway, he was one of the first players I looked at. And he was going for about 40 or 50 pounds. Now, admittedly, the prices of a lot of cards have come down since the roadmap announcements. And also his form has dipped a little bit. But I know his quality. I think he he reminds me of how I felt when Kevin De Bruyne was at Chelsea. When Kevin De Bruyne was at Chelsea, I, I loved watching him. I, I saw him a few times for the under-23 squad and then he broke into the first team and his passing was a joy. I'm a player who... My favourite footballers are players who can pass the ball, who have an amazing passing ability. My favourite player of all time, David Beckham. One of the best passes ever. Um, so I love players that can pass a ball and I spot them really... I know they're good. I know the good ones. Enzo Fernandez is so good. His passing is amazing. He either needs a new manager, which he might get at Chelsea. He has a good chance a new manager comes in and plays around him rather than him struggling to fit in the formation. Or he moves and he's a, an amazing player for like Barcelona or Arsenal or something. It, it won't surprise me. He's got a great career ahead of him. So I'm very excited to own him. The under 20. So I bought four cards since my last video because Cade Cowell was the last one I showed you last week. These two guys are under 23 strikers who I got for what I think are good prices. Um, this boy is injured at the moment, Camille Negley, but when he's fit, I think he was getting good scores before his injury. He's expected to come back soon. So I, it was a very good price, £1.37. Couldn't say no. And then Alan Minder has become the Bruce striker, starting striker. He's a midfielder in the game. I still don't fully know if it's better to have strikers who are listed as midfielders or midfielders who are listed as strikers. But whatever, look at those scores. Alan Minder's latest scores, you know, he's 20 years old. He's the starting striker now. So I'm excited with him. So he could be a really good striker card in a league that suits their team. They're one of the best teams in the league. So... Delighted. And then another under-23 card I bought was Elliot Anderson for 80p. It's showing as 85p because I think ETH's gone up in value. But I bought it for 80p, um, a bargain price, uh, nine, 20 years old, I think, 20 years old. And he's just come back from an injury. So what, what I like about him is I remember when he broke into the first team, he looked lively. He looked like a good player. He's come back from injury and he, he played an FA Cup game. And I think Eddie Howe after the game, he took a penalty in the shootout. He played an FA Cup game that went to a penalty shootout. He took one of the penalties and scored. So I love that. I love that he's got that confidence. I love that. He's, I read a lot into that. I was like, let me keep an eye on him now. I want to scout him. And then when I saw him for ATP, I was like, I've got to get this guy. And so he's just come back from an injury. Newcastle are struggling with injuries. Joe Linton's injured. I think uh, it's Tonali suspended. And they've been playing Sean Longstaff, who I also have, but I know he's not been doing amazing. So there's a slot for Anderson. If he puts a bit of form together, he could finish the season as their starting midfielder. So could be an under 23 pick for me at ATP, also an investment in the future, I think. So those are the four cards I bought. Let's have a look at my lineups for the coming weekend. Right then, here we go. These are my lineups for the coming game week four, five, seven. So... Uh, sorry, I have changed the kind of layout of the um, of your lineups, which I kind of like. Uh, so these are my lineups for March 8th to the 12th. Um, so there's the leagues I'm taking the most seriously that I'm prioritizing are the 270. That's the kind of league. Now that the threshold in the 240 is a bit strange, um, it, I'm not really taking that as seriously. So I'm going for the 270 more because I came close to winning the card one week and then my last reward was from a 270 so i think i've got the players now that are a little bit too good for the 240 so the 270 is kind of where i feel comfortable and then we're also putting a bit of effort now into the under 23 league so those are, those are the two leagues i'm prioritizing and then we're filling out the lineups if we have players left over so let's see what the new lineups like it looks the same so this is my 270 lineup bill allen goal Good old trusty Bilal. He's got home game against the team that I think are like fourth from the bottom of the table. So hoping for a good score from him. Then I've got Captain Daniel Munoz. As I was saying earlier, when he's got a good fixture, he peaks. He has some good scores. He has an 82, a 72. One was against Burnley and then this was against Brighton. So Chelsea and Spurs, he didn't do great, but Burnley, he did an 82. So he's playing Luton at home this weekend. So I'm giving him the captaincy and I'm hoping for a big score from him. Uh, then I've got Jao Paulinho, who's been away for two weeks, for two games because he was suspended. So he's back fresh, 
Fulham key man in their midfield. They're playing Wolves. Um, and the only other sort of player that I might play instead of Paulinho would be best there. He's a, he's my other good midfielder, but he's still not back from injury. I don't know if I've put him in any of my lineups. I must have put him in a lineup because he's not being here, but he is um he's still injured. So best there's 50-50. I can't risk him not in this lineup, so he's not playing. And then Rashika is my other midfielder who I'm playing because they're playing again a good fixture. I've got a lot of people with good away fixtures this week. So I'm a bit I'm not fully convinced on my lineups this week because I've got a lot of good fixtures, but a lot of them are away games. And I just feel like with those, they're 50-50. You never quite know if it's going to be a good fixture. And I feel like Turkey as well, especially the Turkish league, I feel like there is a home bias there. The home crowds do seem to play more of an advantage there. So maybe that's me overthinking it. But Rashika has a good fixture, even though it's an away game. He's going to be in the team. And then Awaniwi is on good form, playing Brighton. Brighton do like to concede a goal. They're not known for their clean sheets. So hopefully Awaniwi can keep his good form. Didn't have a good game last game week, uh, Awaniwi. Who did he play? Uh, Liverpool. He played Liverpool. We're going to forgive him. He was playing top of the table, Liverpool. So let's hope he gets back to scoring against Brighton. So that's my 270. That's kind of like the main league. So that's what I'm prioritizing. Then the other ones... Uh, the under 23 league which i'm very excited about i really like the under 23 league i love that i can piece together players from all over the world i love that i'm still going to be able to put people from all over the world what i really like with the under 23 league is i'm signing a lot of mexican cards or i well, i'm not signing them many anymore but i was signing a lot of mexican cards who were under 23. if i can just work out who the gems are there who the ones that are going to start like the Cade carroll guy at chivas i've got high hopes for him and there's also a few youngsters at santos who are under 23 who if they can become first team happy days so under 23s it's my goalkeeper from paris fc he's my only goalkeeper so he's going to be in goal every week for them soleil i'm putting in this league he's got an okay game i think you know it's an away game again this is another one of those good fixture but an away fixture but soleil's been in such good form lately last three scores have been extraordinary um deciding not to show you it's deciding not to show you what can i say i thought i could show you it doesn't want to show you well but trust me so soleil's got a good he's got, he's got he's got a good form um so soleil's playing alan minder the striker that i've just signed he's playing and then Enzo Fernandez walking into this team. I would be tempted to put him in a stronger team, possibly, but Chelsea have are playing Newcastle, Newcastle at home, which could be a tricky fixture for him. So I'm not fully certain on them. So he's he's starting off in the under-23 squad. But if he has a good game, that's a good squad. And then Kate Carroll, he's the sort of he's the punt in this team. He's at Chivas. He hasn't had sort of a solid run of fixtures at the moment. So we don't know how it's going to go, but we're hoping for the best with Cade Cowell. And then it's a bit confusing with this new lineup. You have to click my lineups and then it shows you. Okay. Um, so, yeah, we're hoping Cade Cowell delivers for Chivas and then the under 23s will have a good squad. Then we've put together a 220 with. So basically, Atlas are playing a really good fixture. It's an away fixture, like I said, a lot of away fixtures this week. They're playing Puebla away. Atlas, Puebla away. Good fixture. Puebla, I think, are second to bottom of the table. So I've got a bit of a mini stack here of Atlas. I've got Lozano, the defender, Fulgencio, the midfielder, and Aguirre, the striker. All are Atlas, even though two of the cards aren't Atlas cards. So I've got three Atlas stack here. Then I've got Mangala at Leon, who's got a good away fixture as well. And then David Ryer in goal. Uh, they've got Brentford, I think, so Arsenal could keep a clean sheet there. The 240 is very punty. The captain is best there, who's a bit of a fitness doubt. Goalkeeper's not playing. I've made best there the captain because if he doesn't play, this team's getting nothing. If he does play, he'll be captain because he's one of our best cards. I don't know if he's my best card anymore. I think Enzo Fernandez might be my best card now, but best there used to be the best there. He's still my best there in the German sense of the word, so... Best there, Castro Montes, the winger at Union SG. Let's hope he plays. There's no Lapu scene in any of the lineups this week. Castro Montes is the one Union SG player I'm backing at the moment. If he lets me down, he's going to be joining Lapu scene on the transfer list. And then I've got Villa Pando and Mesa Bar who have not the worst fixtures, but not the best fixtures. So they're in this kind of punty lineup. Then we've got Champion America, which has been rocked. This team I made 
yesterday before the Preciado news and it had Preciado and I was really excited. I was like, Santos have won two wins in a row. Preciado playing up front. Let's go. So he's been taken out. I've got the Santos goalkeeper Acevedo. Nathan Silva's got a good fixture. He's playing Tijuana, which is a nice fixture for him. So he's going to be captain because I feel like when he has a good game, he keeps a clean sheet. He makes a lot of passes. He's going to be captain. Brian, the most Mexican name ever. Brian, he's going to be in midfield after his 92 points at the, uh, at the weekend. He's going to be in the team. Alan Montes. So I've got a bit of a mini Nakaxa stack here with the defender and the midfielder. And then what I'm doing up front is I don't have many good Mexican strikers. Romero Sordo is... A really talented young Santos winger who I'm hoping is the new Brunetta. He's from Newell's Old Boys in Argentina. Same team as Messi. Maybe he's the new Messi. Maybe he's the new Brunetta. He's a bit of a gamble. But every time I've seen him so far for, for Santos, he's come off the bench and looked really lively. He takes players on. He gets a lot of shots in. And with Preciado being out, I think maybe he gets a bit more game time. And it's either him or Santiago Munoz. I think Munoz is probably more likely to start. But... Munoz has just been giving me 28, 30, 35 at the highest. Sordo, I think, has a higher ceiling if he plays. So I'm going to go with him. But that Preciado being out means the Champion America lineup this week feels really gambly. So we don't know what we're going to expect there. And then the last one is the Premier League Specialist, which has kind of been thrown together. Destiny doggy has got a tricky-ish game. Robertson's got Man City. Sterling's got Newcastle. And Norgard's got Arsenal. All have got tricky fixtures, so I'm not expecting too much from them. If they all somehow deliver, we'll have a good good result there. But that's mainly being put there for the XP points. Like the Academy team, all for the XP points. So those are my lineups in this crazy couple of days for me and my Sorare team. Um, I hope the Preciado news is the band's not too long. I hope maybe someone can buy him off me. I hope I can, maybe I can swap him with a bot. Maybe I can trick someone to taking him off my hands. Who knows what's going to happen? Like and subscribe to the video, guys. If you've enjoyed the content, it really helps me. This is a new channel. We're starting. It's all appreciated. Give me some advice in the comments. It's all good. Share the love. And good week with your game weeks coming. Peace.